Are you ready to master Microsoft Azure and ace the AZ-104 exam to become Microsoft Azure Administrator? Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard and today we start a journey that will transform you into a certified Azure Administrator. In this comprehensive video series, I have curated real exam like questions on AZ-104 and these questions while preparing you for the exam simultaneously will make you ready as an Azure Administrator and help you get your dream job or maybe get a higher role in your existing company. The entire series is loaded up with the Microsoft official documentation, valuable exam tips that will set you up for the highest scores. But wait, there is more. We are not stopping at the theory. We will dive into hands-on lab on Azure portal. We will see and understand how the things actually work in Azure's real world environment. And not just that, my friends, we will dissect complex concept, demystify the cloud and build Azure skills that will give you a cutting edge. So if you are ready to take your Azure journey to new heights, hit that subscribe button and let's dive in. So let's take the first step in this wonderful journey. Here comes the first question. But as you can see, this is part two. Please do not forget to watch the part one. It will help you understand what exactly is AZ-104. And most importantly, should you even do it? Are you the right candidate? Loads of exam details are also covered like question format. And of course, how can you prepare for AZ-104 exam without spending any money? Link for the video is right there in the description box and in the i button on the top right corner. But for now, let's start with this question. And the question says a company needs to create a storage account that must follow the requirements below. The first one is users should be able to add files such as images and videos. The second requirement is ability to store archive data. And third, we have files shares needs to be in place which can be accessed across several virtual machines. And then the requirement at number four is the data needs to be available even if one region goes down. And the final requirement is the solution needs to be cost effective. Which of the following type of storage account would you create for this purpose? Your options are locally redundant storage or LRS, zone redundant storage or ZRS, geo redundant storage or GRS, and lastly, read access geo redundant storage or RAGRS. Let let me first give you the answer and then I will show you the documentation and also make you understand how to select answers in these kind of questions. So the correct answer for this question is option C, Geo Redundant Storage or GRS. Now let's head on to the Microsoft documentation. So this is the Microsoft documentation as you can see that we are given with the comparison between all type of storage classes. So let's understand how can you pick the correct answer. So as you can see on the screen, we are given with five requirements. I would like to start with the requirement D and the requirement says that data needs to be available even if one region goes down. And with this single requirement, we can knock off two types of storage account that is LRS and ZRS. The reason is that both of these accounts support only single region. So now we are left with GRS or GZRS. Let's do a comparison between the both. So friends, both of these accounts allow you to add files such as images and videos. That is requirement number one. And both of these have ability to archive data. That is requirement number two. And then my friends, both these accounts give you redundancy across multiple regions as you can read here. So that fulfills requirement number C and D. And now comes the final requirement that is cost effectiveness and GRS is much more cost effective than GZRS. And that's the reason my friends, we have chosen geo redundant storage as the final answer. I hope you're now clear with the process on how we pick the correct answer. Let's move on to the next question. Question number two, it says that you have an Azure subscription named subscription one that contains a virtual network named VNet1. Now VNet1 is in the resource group called RG1. Moving on, subscription one has a user named user one. Now user one has following roles named reader, security admin and security reader. Now you need to make sure that the user one can assign the reader role for VNet1 to other users users, what should you do? Your options are assign user one the network contributor role for VNet1. Moving on, option B is remove user one from the security reader role for subscription one and then assign user one the contributor role for RG1. And then option C is assign user one the owner role for VNet1. And lastly, assign user one the network contributor role for RG1. And the correct answer for this question is option C, assign user one the owner role for VNet1. And the reason is that only owner role amongst all the given roles has the capability to assign permissions. 
And in case you want to understand all the Azure built-in roles, this is the Microsoft documentation. Here you can understand all the roles such as contributor, owner, the one we talked about just now, reader, role-based access control and much more. And as always, links to all the documentation referred in this video is available in the description box. Please go ahead and read all these documentation very important for AZ104. Moving on with the question number three, question says that you are planning to deploy an Ubuntu server virtual machine to your company's Azure subscription. Now you are required to implement a custom deployment that includes adding a particular trusted root certification authority which of the following should you use to create the virtual machines so here my friends you can see various four commands are given to create virtual machines what are the commands let's check them out the very first option is the new azure rm vm cmd let option b is the new az vm cmd let option c is create az vm cmd let and lastly az vm create command and the correct answer for this question is option d the az vm create command and just in case my friends you are wondering what is this trusted root certification authority here is some documentation here you can read the root ca is just that the root of the chain of the trust it's a certificate authority that can be used to issue other certificates which means it is imperative that the root ca are secure and trusted now friends i have one more variation of the same question the main idea behind grouping these kind of questions is that you pick the right answer no matter how much the questions are tweaked by microsoft it does take a lot of research and time to bring all these variations so please take a moment to press that like button as this is the only way for us to know if you're liking the content and grouping style of these kind of questions and of course this really help us to expand now here comes the second variation of the question number three question number four says that you have an azure subscription named subscription one now you plan to deploy ubuntu server virtual machine named virtual machine one to subscription one now you need to perform custom deployment of the virtual machine a specific trusted root certification authority must be added during the deployment what should you do and friends as you can notice in this question not just that we have to pick the correct command but we also have to tell the file to create so let's check out all the options for file to create. We have answer.ini. The second option is autounattend.conf. And then we have cloudinit.txt. And lastly, unattend.xml. And then in the second part, the tools to deploy virtual machines. We have read all these commands in the previous question. So for now, let's check out which is the file that we need to create. The correct answer is cloudinit.txt. And of course, the correct answer or the correct command to create virtual machine is azvm create command. So friends, if you want to understand the entire process on how cloud.init support the virtual machines in Azure. This is the documentation. Here you can read all about cloud.init and everything else that you need to know for the entire process. But I want to give you one more documentation here and that is tutorial on how to use cloud.init to customize a Linux virtual machine in Azure on first boot. So really a wonderful documentation in case you want to understand more on cloudinit.txt. I want to give you one more documentation so that you can understand the easy VM create command. So this one here, you can understand the entire VM create command. You can see all the parameters that are used. So I really hope you will engage in all these documentation and grow your understanding on Microsoft Azure. So here comes the next question. Question number five says that you have an Azure subscription that contains an Azure Active Directory tenant named Contoso.com and an Azure Kubernetes service cluster named AKS1. Now friends, there is an administrator that reports that she is not able to grant access to AKS1 to the users in Contoso com now you need to ensure that the access to aks1 can be granted to the contoso.com users what should you do first and your options are from the contoso.com modify the organization relationship settings then the option b is from contoso.com create an oauth 2.0 authorization endpoint option c is recreate aks1 and option d is from aks1 create a namespace and the correct answer for this question is option B from Contoso.com create an OAuth 2.0 authorization endpoint. So friends, in this second part, we took five questions. We understood a lot of concepts today and things are just getting warmed up in the next episodes. We will take more, better, harder questions that will set the stage for you for the AZ-104 exam. In case you have any question that you want me to cover in this video series or suggestions or feedback, let me know in the comment section or you can also email me at connectors at the rate thetechblackboard.com. And friends, please do not forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, press that bell icon so you get the timely notification of all our upcoming videos. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.